time is, I'm not used to my things, if you haven't noticed. My definition of time is very simple. It can be defined most simply as an interval between one event and the next, okay? Listen very carefully. The present is constantly becoming the past or the future, and therefore the present represents only a small fraction of time itself. We'll have a test on that at the end of this program. <laughs> so, you all understand where I'm coming from? The present is very short. All of a sudden it's the past and then the future. <coughs> time is always moving in one direction and it never stands still. Einstein wants to find time as what a clock says, be a genius as he is. But historically, man's need to measure time with at least some pretense of accuracy has been so great that clockworks have been one of his most sophisticated inventions way back in the early centuries. Cliff Side's town clock was the ruler of the community in the not so distant past. This clock would provide a standard of time, allow the people to take their time from it, be a source of comfort and lasting pleasure with all these beautiful bells, constantly teach functionality, the value of time, and be a missionary worker against indolence. But also record and document historical events, promote order and system to this community. In closing, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this historic project. Everyone here has been genuinely friendly and warm to me over the past few months, and I will certainly return. Now I know firsthand how, how much of the populace of Cliffside truly enjoys this rare opportunity to have a 90-year-old grandfather clock in your backyard, front yard, or the side of your yard. Thank you again. almost forgot uh, this uh, clock is oh. <laughs> this clock also photographs very well as you can see and uh, it's a little different clock it's a picture I took out on a beautiful summer day when I was here at the site and if you look at it carefully it has the correct time on it now it's not a coincidence it's got uh, it's a actual working photograph okay so uh, that's for the historical society and and they're a long time. Engagement to this talk. Thanks again. As has already been mentioned, the clock has been a, a witness to the activities in the town. It's been a witness to wars, to the service men and women going off to serve our country. And we'd like to take time to pay tribute. We have our World War II monument over here, but this is for all veterans who served in wars and in peacetime. In the early 1970s, when the clock tower was still down on the uh, memorial building downtown, I had the opportunity to take my tape recorder down there and record the, the bell striking. Some of the workmen got up in there and set it off all these quarter hours and the striking time and so forth. And at uh, one of the Veterans Day programs, I had Miss Polly Moore, to Polly Scruggs Moore, to narrate the Anna Fortune Haynes, uh, Bridges rather, uh, Haynes, I was right the first time, little poem, The Town Clock in the Haynes book. And I just have a short portion that we put with the bell as it's striking on the original memorial building. If you listen closely, you can hear water coming over the dam when the bell's striking. For nearly a quarter of a century, its two hands have pointed the time to us from its tower atop the Haynes Memorial Building. Its chimes and tones clear and musical have sounded the hours, day after day and year after year, faithfully and untiringly. Now that our servicemen are returning from foreign lands, the old town clock seems to strike a fuller note to welcome them home. They, too, are surely glad to see the old clock, for it is a part of everything that means home, peace, and freedom. It means the little town where many of them were born and brought up, friends, neighbors, and loved ones. In loving memory of our boys who have made the supreme sacrifice and will not return to us, our clock will toll gently.
suits our program here at the clock site, with the exception. The clock doctor. It's hard to get out Jim Van Oresdale. I just call him the clock doctor. <laughs> He's become a great friend of a lot of us around here. Uh, we stop and talk to him and uh, when he's up here working on the clock. And he has even been known to come up here on a Saturday and just have a picnic under the pecan tree. As he said, uh, you have a grandfather clock on all sides of you and uh, it gives him peace and inspiration to be up here. And we've adopted him as a, a, a son of Cliffside. But he's, he loves the clock mechanism. In the, in the book, The Town Clock, there's a line that says, nobody wants to see how it works. Yes, I do, I always did. But now you have a rare opportunity. I've asked Jim to open the back door, and you can, if you care to, file by and just see the mechanism that operates the, the clock faces up, upstairs. Our program will continue down at the church here in uh, a little bit, but before that, we have some refreshments over here at the table. And uh, like for you get, if you haven't already, get you a little lemonade and a cookie or two. But we're going to honor Ms. Myrtle Mapron. She's a longtime resident of Cliffside. She never has lived anywhere else. So uh, we have a special program for her that uh, we want to recognize her with a Lifetime Achievement Award for. Uh, being a great contributor to the life of Cliffside. Thanks for, for coming, and if you have any questions of, of me or any of these other dignitaries up here, I don't know how many promises you can get from these politicians out here, but, but uh, hit them up while you, while you can. <laughs> thanks for coming, and thanks for your support on uh, all these projects that, that have been mentioned. <laughs>